Here we are, news review time, and we're joined by Kojo Poku, an energy analyst. We'll be interacting with him shortly, but right before that, let me let you know, of course, this segment brought to you kind courtesy of Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. Where can you find them? Well, they are all over the country, but here's what they're offering you gratis for free. Prostate screening, if you're a man, just head to them and they'll do it for you for free. Of course, everything else that follows, you would have to uh, cater for. But then if you're a woman, fertility screening as well. You don't even know your status when it comes to fertility. And that's why you should make tracks to Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. Where can they be found? Here in Accra, at Spintex opposite the Shell Sign Board. Then there's Kumase Kronomabwehian behind the Angel Educational Complex. That's Tema Community 22, Takrade Anaji Estate. Techiman Hanswa and Esiama and Enzima. If you'd like to reach out to them, which I proffer you do, the numbers to call 0244 867 068 or 0274 234 321. Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. But let's start now with the news review on the AM show. Kojo Poku joins the conversation. Mr. Poku, a very good morning to you, sir. A uh, very good morning to you, my brother. It's unfortunate that I can see your. Happy mother's face. <laughs> uh, I can see your happy mother's face. I'm sure you had a good time yesterday with the family. I did. The rest of the day turned out to be a bit uh, tricky, but yes, we did. We did have a good day, and uh, we bless the Lord for that. And I celebrate all, since we didn't have the opportunity of doing that yesterday, I didn't. I celebrate all my mothers. I have a number of them, actually. My own mom, Susie Akapo. And interestingly, I have another mom. Susan Na Amanua Ankra, um, Rita Kwashi, Madam Kudao, Madam Blebo, Sister Mary. I mean, if I start, I will never end. So, okay, to all of I them. Was about, I was about to say that if we both start mentioning the mothers, we have to wish Happy Mother's Day. This show will be one hour long just uh, by mentioning names. So, we'll just take indeed. a moment and wish all mothers a happy belated Mother's Day. Yeah. And, and there's one, though, I have to mention Frank Craig, all the way in Tennessee in the U.S., my. Godmother or foster mother, if you like. Interesting. Anyway, so uh, how did you celebrate your mo your mom? If if well, um, the family wanted to go out for lunch, so we had to um, try it, get reservation. It was difficult getting any, so we yeah, places were fully late. booked. We went to Golden Tulip and Gate Crash, but we were able to get a very good seat and had a good lunch at Golden Tulip. Wait, yesterday. were you in Kumasi or Accra? Because if you're no, in Accra, La then La I Lancaster, suspect you've been... Sorry, Lancaster. <laughs> I keep calling that place Golden Got Tulip. you there. Lan <laughs> Lancaster in... Uh, Lancaster, yes. Okay. Lancaster in Accra. But even the Kumasi one is Lancaster as well, so... Uh, both hotels are now yeah. Lancaster. W what yes, I didn't how... know, what I didn't know was whether that branch had also been subsumed. So, but at least I know for Accra. That's why I was trying to play safe. Yeah, no, both of them are Lancaster. Just I'm old school. I, 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 it takes time for me to adjust. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, we're going to make tracks, but right before we get into the papers, yeah, uh, on the back of the NDC's uh, parliamentary and presidential primaries, you come from the other side, but based on what you saw, on that day, the good, the bad, and the ugly. How would you assess briefly, briefly, what what happened on Saturday? Well, um, it's a good thing that they've gone through it. I mean, there was a fear that it might not happen. Uh, mm. So at least all the technical, legal wrangling went on, and I think the the elders of the party were able to put a handle on it and basically yeah. make sure that it happened. Now, on the day, we saw videos of people saying that they won't vote because they were promised transportation and the transportation is not coming and all that. Look, um, we're beginning to make this process a very expensive process. Mm. Because if a delegate goes to a polling station, you join a charity organization, you join a non-governmental organization. It's, 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 a, it's an association that you have joined. But then to go and exercise your right to elect a leader of that society, you want to be given TNT. And if you are not given that TNT, you will not vote. Then why are you part of that society? Yeah. You know, I think we should start educating Ghana. And, and I, and I know the specific party. instance you're referring to. Yes, I mean, we should let Ghanaians understand what they've gotten themselves into. Political parties are societies. It's like Mary Mother. It's like all the other church societies everybody joined. And we are happy to contribute to go on trips with these um, organizations and these societies. Mm. But when it comes to political parties, you want the political party to pay you to do the duty you have ascribed. You got up and joined. But I don't blame them. I blame the people at the top who have made this thing seem like a cash cow. 
because the guy at the top, bottom, the grassroots, feels that if that guy gets to the top, then he becomes friends and family, and he doesn't see anything out of the association that he or she joins. So, look, it's, it's getting a bit ridiculous where people are blatantly demanding for certain things as if, you know, meanwhile, if you ask that person, have you paid your dues in the last year, they've not ever paid dues. To so, the so, so could you, th that is one interesting angle you've brought up, but there's also the element of money in our politics. And while, by and large, that did not happen, in a drought, we saw something rather curious. In another place, it was someone sharing rice. So, in other words, go and cast your vote. And I don't know how he was able to prove that, as I see, this or that person had voted for him, but then he would give you a bag of rice in the full did glare the person, the of the public. Win? Yes, then, then, then there was the one in Idra where she was openly, brazenly spreading money from the rooftop of her car. And it did not happen once, it happened twice. And she says, oh, she found money in her car and started sharing it. I don't know the logic of that. I don't know how logical that is. But uh, people were calling for the, the special prosecutor to get onto that case. You remember the DC who said that he had paid some people to vote for him, and so he wanted his money back if they hadn't voted for him. Well, mm -hmm. the, the interesting scenario here is that, well, she is not a public officer. This wasn't a public election. It was a party election. So maybe the special prosecutor may not be able to go into it. But whichever way, this does not bode well for our politics, does it? But Ben, the, the lady sharing money of out of the car, did she win? She didn't. Interestingly, That's all the people who shared anything, from the rice guy to the lady sharing money, they all lost. Thank you. So uh, it goes to tell people and give a certain message. And I, I, I can cite a few examples of some young people who felt that it's coming to money or the, the family has money and they can go into constituencies and win and they thought that, look, it was about money. Look, this politics, I keep telling people that, yes, you see, we are making it about money. And the delegates are beginning to demand their pound of flesh when it comes to these things, and I'm complaining that, look, we should try and put a stop to it. But at the heart of it, in my one year of doing this thing, trying to lead the, um, the MPP, one of the things I have come across is that those that come at you for money at every corner are the ones who are not supporting you. I see. I, and, and that's what I have concluded. Those that come at you for money at every corner, every minute, every turn, they are trying to now squeeze some money out of you. They are the ones who are not supporting you. Because those that are supporting you, I have some wonderful guys in the northern region. I have this wonderful guy in the northeast, Mark, who is doing a brilliant job. The guy in central region doing a brilliant job. All KMP reps around the country. Look, those serious ones, they don't come at you for anything. Sometimes you feel bad for them. Okay, because you see that these guys are doing more than they, they, are, they are going above for you. Right. And you feel like, look, guys, let me just chip in. And they're like, no, 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 no. There's a lady who comes to me every day and do rounds. If I try to give her money for um, her fuel, she gets upset. These are the people that understand what it takes to be part of something genuine. So, look, it's, it's, it's up to us, the politicians, to basically try and avert these things. You need the money for the logistics. Look, people are complaining, like our, our big uncle, Mr. Dufour, is complaining about there's no album. He's complaining that uh, the process is not fair. Did he put resources towards there being an album? Did he put resources towards meaning that the election is held well? You see, we spend money in the wrong area. Then come and complain that the party, the party doesn't have the resources. So if the NDC didn't have a, um, a credible album, maybe they didn't have the resources to put together a credible album. Meanwhile, people have money to give 40 cities per person for transportation. People have money to go around and spread the money. We all heard about the money that uh, allegedly was being spent by the camp. Did they give that money to the party to organize a credible election? No, you did not. You went and spent that money in the campaign trail. Then you want the party to work, be able to organize a credible election. How? So for me, the candidate, and this goes to both sides, to our side as well, which is we have an upcoming um, campaign. People going around spending money, make sure that the party is resolved. If you don't resolve the party to organize a credible election, then you don't get a credible election. It's as simple as that because the party is a non is non making is a non profit making organization. Unless you donate to it, they don't make money any anyhow. So that's interesting. Just because you brought in uh, Dr. Kwabna Dufour, quick one. So you feel 
on the back of what he raised, the questions he raised. Well, how much did he contribute to the, the success of the elections? That comes into question. You've already questioned that. But do you feel this should have a ripple effect on those close to him? Because those in the NDC have said he unnecessarily tangled, entangled the NDC in everything that happened. So guess what? In Setra Afram Plains, uh, his son, Dr. Kwabna Dufour Jr., who was expected to win, didn't. He actually placed second. Then his son's uncle, uh, Dr. Dufour's, Dr. Dufour Senior's own relation, also there, Dr. Mensa also, also lost. Dr. Alex Mensa also lost. He was actually the incumbent. And guess what? One uh, Nasira, Ajia Nasira, took the slot and won. Do you think uh, there are going to be consequences? As you say, you didn't contribute much towards the success of the elections, yet you badmouthed it and everything. Do you think, generally, there are consequences for saying in politics? No, there isn't if you conduct an election. Look, elections should be about ideas. It should be a concept of ideas, not right. a concept of personalities. Okay, and that's the problem we have in Ghana. All our contest is beginning to be a personality contest. It shouldn't be. If you went out there and a the contest was about ideas, then you will not fall foul of insulting or insinuating or putting people in bad light. Then after the election, the other side will reach out to you and say, oh, sir, you have some brilliant ideas in your campaign. Please come and join me and let's all build a better party or a better country. But if you go around and insinuate and cast people in bad light, then obviously they are going to have issues. You see, I always keep saying that politicians forget, but they don't forgive. Sorry, they forgive, but they don't forget. Okay? They will forgive you, shake hands, but there's no way if you call people names, they ever, even if they forget, the people behind them don't forget. So I think that the contest, which they guess is done, and my advice goes to the candidates in the MPP side, let's have a contest of ideas. You know what I mean? We've seen videos of some candidates going around basically calling names and, and being um, disrespectful to other candidates, which is not helpful. So if it's a contest of ideas, then that way you don't call out anybody's name. I, Kujun Safapoko, have been going out to most regions and having my meetings. And anybody who cares to call any of the regions I have been, they will tell you how wonderful my presentation is. I do less, like less than an hour presentation. I don't mention anybody's name. I just basically do a presentation of what I, Kujoboku, will do to change the party and country without mentioning anybody's name. That is what the election is about. It's about ideas. And that is why I'm gaining the traction I'm gaining. Okay? So, look, um, I think that people, uh, you should bear the consequences of your action. If uh, his family or people related to him or close to him or people who work with him suffer in the party as a result of his utterances, that's unfortunate that those are consequences of things you do. Let's get into the papers very quickly. Uh, Daily Graphic this morning saying, attitudinal change key to natural resource management. That's according to Kojo Ponkroma. First tranche, IMF cash coming. That story as well on page 13. Then, Mahama leaves NDC again, charges party to focus on winning 2024 elections. Samira Baumia, Tego Sisters are the mirror. Uh, that is the mirror newspaper. Model Mothers 2023. And drown school children buried. I'm going to do a quick one on all of these major stories. Uh, so we've already spoken about the Mahama one, winning by 98.9%, Kojo Bonsa with 1.1%. We all know of that. Dr. Dufour, interestingly, some uh, people still voted for him. Three here, 10 here, uh, 20 there, but it didn't add up to anything in the, in the final analysis, though he had withdrawn from the race. So, but some people still uh, gave him some trickle of, of votes. But let's look at this one. Mahama leaves the NDC again. On that, I will ask you, on the back of this resounding, overwhelming victory, 98.9%, almost 300,000 of the votes cast, you want to lead the MPP. Can you, from what you've seen, beat John Dramani Mahama? And even if not you, hold on, even if not you, if some other candidate wins, on the back of everything we're facing, can the MPP break that eight, defeat John Dramani Mahama? What do you think? Well, well, Ben, I can beat John Dramani Mahama with, my hand, with one hand tied behind my back. You, uh, ho ho hold it, hold it, hold uh, it. You are I, saying uh, you, we Kodopoku. We've had this conversation before, Ben. You can beat John Dramani Mahama with one hand with tied one behind one. your back. It's very simple. It's very easy and very simple. I see. He's not a, look, he's not a candidate. 
Mm. If, look, if you've gone to a contest and you've done, look, no president in Ghana has only done one term. There's a reason for that. He's the only one that has done one term because he performed so badly that Ghanaians couldn't wait for another four years to get rid of him. So they got rid of him from the first if you look at it, If you look at it technically, he, he really didn't have one term, did he? Well, he did have a one term. When, why did he have one term? He, he enjoyed, he he enjoyed the latter term of uh, president, no, former president. No, he had the latter term of president. Uh, and he had been Mills. vice president and at the time. then went to election in 2012 and won and lost in 2016. So he had one term, one full term. I don't see where you are getting this from. He, he, he came in when his excellency died and then did that rest of that term. You, you say you don't see where I'm coming from. Let me explain to you where I'm coming from. It's simple. It's like the current vice president uh, maybe trying to detach himself and say, oh, I have been vice president. I'm now coming into it for a full term. Have you heard the rhetoric? People are tying him to what this administration has done. That is the angle I'm coming from. I'm not disputing that no, he actually are, did. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not disputing that he actually spent one term of four years as president. But I'm merely saying, in the political analysis, people tie you to the previous term. So if you want to justify it, you would say that people became tired of him because he had been there with the previous administration. He had had his own term, and the fatigue was there. Eight years is eight years. It's, it, it's not true. Mm. It's never true. Look, an individual, you see, Ben, when you make that analysis, we make it look like leadership doesn't mean anything. Really and truly, look, I honestly believe that if you look at the numbers that he's electing John Tamani Mahama got in 2012, the young people of this country, especially in Great Accra, overwhelmingly voted for your business like John Tamani Mahama. He really got the young people's vote. But you see, one that much is given, much is expected. So if the young people give you that much vote because they think that, oh, you are the one that you are hip and your slogan is it the big kek and that sort of things, right? People can relate and say, okay, he's a young guy, let's give him a chance. Then they give you that chance and you come in and you disappoint them. They don't have the patience for you. So let's not make it look like people judge the party. No, people judge the president, the leader. I honestly don't subscribe to the fact that people think that, oh, the performance of a leader now goes to diminish the chances of the whole entire party. No, it's not true. Right. So I, I don't subscribe to that. But look, going to your point of can I beat his excellency John Dramani Mahama, 100%. I can, look, because look, all the things that I keep saying is that election 2024 is not about NDC members or MPP members. It's about the 4 million votes that don't take part in this political process. In the last election, we did registration in November or October thereabouts, right? And then voted in December. We had about 17 million people registered voters. Only 13 million showed up at the poll to vote. It tells you that 4 million people in the midst of COVID, right, will queue and collect the voter ID just as an ID card. Right. Okay? But they are not interested in the political process because they don't think it addresses their problems. I, Kuchupuku, are the one who is revitalizing that 4 million base. The young guy who is on IG, on Snap, interacting with these young ones to see that, look, there's a better future for them. So, look, it is not about would an NDC person vote for an MPP candidate or it's not about would an MPP person or a party member vote for an NDC. Everybody will vote for their own person. Every person who is NDC will vote NDC. Everybody who is MPP will vote MPP. Who makes the difference? The middle guy. Okay, the average Joe who goes to work every morning and cries for the little in his pocket and he can't make enough ends meet to pay the family bills. Is Kujoboku putting solutions for these people? Yes. And for me, that's why I said I'll beat him with my one hand, one hand tied behind my back. Because he does not appeal to the middle voter. All right. Now let's get into other stories. I find it interesting, though, uh, as you say, he is not a, a candidate that he had disappointed, you know, the youth especially. Uh, I go around the country as well. And I've, I've, I've listened to quite a number of people about, especially young people, especially young people, in terms of how disappointed they are with this administration. I don't know how you think that will impact the fortunes of your party. But let's get into page 13. Attitudinal change key to natural resource management, Kojo Ponkroma says so. He stressed that at the National Dialogue on Natural Resource Management, which ended in Accra last Friday, organized, of course, by the Daily Graphic. Interestingly, uh, a, a number of bigwigs in the MPP have been cited for destroying our natural resources with illegal small-scale mining, a.k.a. Galamsey. Now, the first tranche IMF cash coming and the first tranche of uh, $600 million 
uh, is expected. It will be used for budgetary support and also serve as balance of payment support for the country. Of course, it will go directly to the central bank and help show up our economy. What is your reaction to these two stories? Well, quickly, look, um, you, the youth around the country are disappointed with the current leadership, yes. We all share, but he's no longer on the ballot. He's no longer running again. So this administration is not coming back. There's a new administration that's going to come back. So that one, I don't see how a new person will come in and tell the youth about their new ideas, and then the youth will make a choice. About the IMF money coming in, look, I have said that the IMF is only an emodium. It stops the diarrhea. It doesn't stop or cure the infection. We have not still seen from the government um, the policy that will basically cure the infection. Slow rate of growth in the economy, private sector not having liquidity, um, banks losing money because of all the results of the debt exchange, and um, a booming economy. We don't have that. What are the things that are to be put in place to make sure that we actually come out of the bottom of the U, okay? Because we are bottom. When you're doing a U curve, you need to now start climbing. We had, I, I Kujupuku, have not seen those policies that will now start giving us growth. You need growth for industry to start hiring, for people to have disposable income. You need to basically create that enabling environment for that to happen. I am not seeing that. The 600 million coming in, if we start paying our indebtedness after we've restructured all these debt, if we start paying our indebtedness, that resources, yes, will help give us dollar liquidity to pay our indebtedness. But for this economy to get back to where it was seven, eight, ten, nine, twelve years ago, we need to start what? Growing the economy. One of the things that nobody talks about anymore is the country rating. Okay? In the past, we made a lot of noise about the B rating the country had. We made a lot, a lot of noise about how um, the economy has been run so well because the international community now see it fit that we have a good rating. Let me quickly tell you how rating... Very quickly, very quickly, very quickly on that so we get to how, the daily how, guide. How, how, how rating affects you in your country? No, no business in your country can have a better rating than the country. So the country rating is the top ceiling. Except it's a, it's a multinational um, organization, then they can use the mother company, which sits in Europe, as for their rating. Because right. Ghana now has a very bad rating, businesses in Ghana or Ghanaian businesses are suffering getting credit. Okay, so that we need to change that narrative. We need to change the environment so businesses can grow. I don't see how the IMF and the six million coming in changes that. We need to see policy from government which addresses growth in the economy. Let's get into the Daily Guide newspaper. Uh, there's Mahama Leeds NDC, 17 MPs, four. Uh, you're looking at Delasso and Kwando, ABA Fuseni and Sagnarigu, uh, Samson Chirajia, and then Kwabanat Donko, Pru uh, as well, in that Pru area. I, I don't know whether it's Pru East, I have to confirm. But all of these big wigs falling, losing uh, their incumbency, so to speak. Immigration officer rescues cops. Captain Koda chases from Pom Boateng over Galamse report and complete wager steel bridge, steel bridge now. That's according to residents. I'll take these two stories on page six uh, very, very quickly. So let's get in there. So residents of Wager and its surrounding communities in the Great Accra region have blamed the boat accident which claimed the lives of nine school children on the delayed uh, completion of a modular composite steel bridge sited close to the Wager Dam on River Densu at Aigbe Town. According to the residents, the, the uncompleted steel bridge is expected to serve as a vehicular and footbridge for residents of the community, including school children who currently use boats and canoes as a means of crossing from Wager to Aigbe Town and vice versa for school. Now, here's the, here's the point. These nine school children who have drowned this time, I think 20 of them were affected, nine drowned and are, they have passed on. In fact, their burial was organized over the weekend. The Daily Graphic captures that. This is the second we've seen in a short space of time. January, we had one. Eight lives were lost in Wayokope in the center east area on that stretch. Here we are again with this. I don't know how serious we are as a country when it comes to protecting the most vulnerable, in this instance, 
children. You don't provide them with schools. You don't provide them with bridges. You don't provide them with boats. You don't provide them with life jackets. And yet when they die, in fact, it took a long time, no proper response from authorities. That's, that's the first one. And then, but for the bravery of an immigration officer with the Western North Regional Immigration Command, two police officers in uniform would have been beaten to death by an unknown young man at Sechi. We also... The unfortunate incident happened on Saturday, May 13, 2023, at about 9 a.m. at the Anglican Church Park in Sichuvios in the Western North region. The attacker was said to have used a club and a pestle to hit the heads of the police officers, an inspector and a corporal who fell unconscious in the process. Now, uh, this immigration officer quickly picked uh, the AK-47 rifle belonging to one, according to a statement signed by the acting Western North Regional Commander, of the Ghana Immigration Service, ACI Augustus Echampong, uh, AICO2 Nuruddin Abdul Ganil Takra, stationed at the Western North Immigration Regional Command, was the one who rescued the two police officers who were under attack. Quick reactions to these two stories. Well, uh, look, when it comes to the case story, it's very unfortunate. It's disheartening when at any point in time somebody has to lose a loved one. But with this infrastructure in the municipalities and the communities not being taken good care of or repaired or maintained, whose fault is that? You mentioned authorities. Which authorities would you blame? Local government. Well, 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 well let, me, let, me, let me clarify. Initially, when the one that happened in Wyokope did, we had the education minister, we had other ministers. Uh, I've forgotten exactly which one, whether it's... Uh, transport or something, but we had one of them go there. Promises were made about a school building. The children there are now having to school in a church. They use a church building. The promises haven't been kept. In terms of life jackets, uh, we were told something like that would happen. I don't know. I cannot say for certain what well, has happened ben, on the back the of that. But, but these that promises were name. made by these ministers. So there's, there's an area to no, point uh, to, most definitely. Ben, the point I was going to make was that the local government the local government system has disappointed us. Mm. Okay, that's the point I'm making. It doesn't have to take a minister that sits in a crowd to go into a locality when these incidents happen. Where is the MMDCE? Where is the district assembly person? Where is the municipality assembly person? Because these infrastructures, when they are not fit for purpose, who sees them? Is it the minister or the local or community? You see, my, the point I was driving at is that the authorities that we should blame and we should do something about it, it's the local government. Because the local government is not fit for purpose. Okay? The DCE, the MMDCE are sitting there and not doing the work they're supposed to do. How is it that you can let these food bridges get to the situation and then put kids' life in danger? Now, there isn't proper school. Who is supposed to take care of these things? All these things boil down to the MMDCE. They are there for a reason. Everybody thinks that we appoint district executive or municipal executive just because we have to appoint them. No. We appoint them to change the lives of the people in that municipality. We appoint them to change the life of the people in that district. Mm. The fact that they are not doing it is creating, creating these problems. So for me, I have said that, look, Mr. President should wake up and basically sack, dismiss all these MMDCs who are not performing. Because, look, there isn't money, but you can raise the money in some of these municipalities through your IGF. Okay? Right. But if you cannot do that, then you are sitting there and complaining about common funds. Common funds is not the only source of revenue for an assembly. So the point I'm saying is that it's unfortunate, and today, eight parents don't have their kids. It's unfortunate. Now, um, if you go to the immigration officer who went in and rescued... So, so um, very briefly on that, if you may, I want us to look at about two stories uh, more before we end, or on the back of time. Thank you, Kojo. Go ahead. Right. So, obviously, you're looking at the immigration officer. Who is more, who is able to go and rescue... Uh, was it a policeman? Yes, two police officers. Okay. Thank you. We've seen videos of similar instances where in the Galamse area, you have, um, what do you call it? You have Galamse people dragging policemen on, on, on the street. Okay? And it's unfortunate. And I blame the style of recruitment is going on today in our security services. Okay? The level of training and the overwhelming number of people that want to get into these. Before, if you see a policeman, you, step, you take two steps back. Today, you see some policemen and women, and you just look at them and laugh and walk away. Because, I mean, you're asking yourself, what criteria was he used to select this person as a police? 
You understand? And I'm not saying that no, nobody can be a, in the security forces. But if we are trying to recruit, we need to basically equip, train, give them some level of expertise to handle themselves. If somebody with an AK-47 can easily be manhandled by um, an individual, then what are we talking about? Mm. Okay, so it, it's all, I mean, I just think that we should look at the training and the recruitment process of the security service to improve so that they can help us better. All right. Let's wrap with these two stories, Kojo. Uh, the publisher, the finder, the Economy Times reflecting a number of stories we've already done. But these are the ones that stand out for me. The Ghanaian publisher says, government unveils 100 million Ghana CDs for women. I, I am very passionate about women's affairs, so I had to do the story. The government has launched a 100 million Ghana CD grant funding initiative for training and capacity upgrading of high growth, m micro, small, and medium scale enterprises owned by women and young persons. The initiatives, which are being supported and funded by the World Bank and the government under the Economic Transformation Project, uh, will allocate 40 million Ghana cities as grants for women, S MSMEs, and 60 million to young persons between the ages of 18 and 35. Uh, launching it, the Minister for Trade and Industry, Mr. Kobina Tahiri Hammond, said the programs aligned with government's goal of providing training, capacity upgrades, and more to help businesses. I am all for this, but I'm hoping, again, like we've seen with government initiatives, that it actually reaches the people who need it, who need the funding, because these are some of the ways we can shore up our economy. Women, we know how they tackle affairs when it comes to business, and let's depoliticize it. That is my only hope on that. Then I'll wrap with uh, this story in Econom Economy Times. Ghana's economy looks fragile, and Ghana's economy may be heading into recession if the government is unable to secure the $3 billion extended credit facility from the IMF. The government, of course, is hoping for that $3 billion uh, deal, but in fact, uh, in an interview with me, Dr. Saad Idrisu said something. It's captured here by the paper as well. In terms of that warning of a looming crisis in the banking sector, he has said that if by June thereabouts we don't get, for example, the $1.5 billion that we are seeking from partner agencies, the international uh, you know, community, in terms of shoring up our banking sector, you've heard of that fund that has been set up, our banks could start going under. Quick thoughts on these two. Well, um, we are back to pre-2017, where the banks were not in good shape. Even now, they recapitalized. And when they recapitalized, because of the depreciation of the city and basically the debt exchange, they are making losses, which go directly to shareholders' fund. And unfortunately, we are where we are now, that we need to go and find another set of money to do another banking sector bailout. Unfortunate. Very, very, very unfortunate. All those things are monies that could have gone to what? To business, private business. Because if the private business does well, then the banks will do well because then they have more cap liquidity to put in the banking sector. For me, I just think that we need to rethink all these banking bailouts. Banks, when they have money, who do they give it to? They give it to government. Lazy way of working. The banks don't give credit. And even if they are to give credit, they ask for your grandmother, his ancestors, and the arm of a chicken and the teeth of a tiger. Okay? Things that you cannot fulfill. So the banks are not in the position to easily help um, these big businesses. Right. Like, that ties in into my, the first story you did, where it's now taking government and the World Bank to come and provide 40 million and 50 million to youth and the, the, the women sector. Why isn't the banks able to do these things? But I think if private sector does it, they can do it and monitor it better. Look, um, I have been going around the country and saying that we should give training, um, skill training and entrepreneurship. Now, this money is a good thing. But don't just give it to them by just saying that, oh, you're taking them on a three-day workshop and blah, 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 and you give them the money. No. You should teach them a skill okay. and teach them how to do business and then give them the money. So if right. you just give somebody a money, the person going to say, oh, I'm going to sell mobile phones. I'm going, to sell, I'm going to open a shop to sell mobile phones and accessories. Then you give that person money. How many people are selling mobile phones and accessories? Yeah. And in two weeks, if that mobile phone business doesn't do well, the money is gone. So to empower the youth, especially the money for the youth, we should teach them a skill, teach them entrepreneurship, then give them that money. For All the right. women, we should do cooperatives. In
bring them to market areas if we realize that they have a shop and they have a setup, then help them with a the capital. But it should be in the cooperative, it should be more of a cooperative. Four or five women will take money so that they are responsible for each other being able to pay it back. If people take money like it, mm. yes. I, I get the point you're making. I think maybe some other time we'll get time to expatiate further on that specific point. I guess it's something you've been talking about going around. So it's something to look at. But we're grateful that you joined us this Monday morning. Thank you very much. And I have to say that your brooch, uh, I, if you can get me one of those brooch, I'll be very, very happy. Because it's like a very wonderful brooch. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Kodopoku Energy Analyst joining us this morning. Let me just send, uh, send some shouts to Ethan and Hewlett. Uh, young boys, so to speak, saw you in church yesterday. You always watch the AM show. Thank you for doing the watching. Uh, right before we get into Sports Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic helping us to bring you this segment, of course, they're offering free prostate screening, free fertility screening as well. Make roads to them. Just uh, reach out to them in Accra. Spintex, opposite the Shell signboard. Kumasi Krono Mabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. Takra Dianaji, State Tama Community 22. Techima Hanswa and Asiyama Enzima. Their call lines 0244-867-068 or 0274-234-321. End point, homeopathic clinic, the end to chronic disease. Also bringing us to the end of the news review. Up next, we serve you sports Tuesday.